are back. Welcome back to the Nick Hall Comedy Podcast. I am your host, Nick Hall, joined as always by... Josh Griffey. Hey, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcast, please give us a rating and review that helps us out a ton, more than you'll ever know. If you want to get some sweet Trash Dros gear Trash Dros. or any other Kent Murphy apparel, go to CoachKentMurphy.com slash shop. And of course, if you want to follow us on the social medias, it's at Coach Kent Murphy. None of that fake shit. Fuck those guys. I hate them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a good intro. It's shocking how many of them there are. Too. There's a lot. Hey, you know what? It's in a way it's flattering. Yeah. Because, you know, that means at least like we've done something right that people want to copy us. Yeah. But like it also sucks that they're selling our merch and I want to make I want that money. Yeah, we want that money because YouTube ain't giving it to us. Also, <laughs> what would be nice is if they were like true parasites <laughs> And they could come up with some Kent Murphy content that we yeah. could then steal back. Yeah. You know, like be a feeder <sighs> system, right? Yeah. But all they do is ask people to follow other fake accounts, and it's the worst. Right. It's dumb. <laughs> but, uh, hey, uh, uh, other other news. Uh, next Friday, March 5th. Let me, let me double check that date. March 5th. I think it's March 5th. Maybe March 6th. It could be March 6th. I'm just going to pull my calendar up here. Uh, yeah, Friday, March 6th. Look out, Panama City, Florida. I'm coming for you. We're going down there. We're doing, there's a big uh, national softball tournament. And old Kent's making an appearance. So if you guys are in that area, come on out. I'll have some more info soon on that. But, uh, yeah, we're going to road trip down there and mm -hmm. do some silly stuff. And then I'll be in Arizona for a week messing around with you spring training fools. And uh, if you guys really want to get on board, we're trying to put together a tour this summer where we'll come, we'll come to your town. We'll come right to it. Disgrace every fucking family in that city, and then, yeah, we'll, and then sure. we'll leave. Yeah. And then we'll leave. Kit and Hank yeah. hit the road, dude. Well, we want to do a dinger derby, so if you guys know yeah. anybody that wants to sponsor that or has some hookups or fields or whatever, just, you know, shoot it our way. <laughs> do you think our road trip will be as cool as the movie Ed? Absolutely. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I was telling you, because I rewatch, because when you are a parent, you're one of the hardest things about being a parent. I know this is classic no, white, I'm in. white people problems, right? <laughs> but... You hit this point where you're like, if I see Moana again, never seen this it. could turn into like The Shining. You know, what I mean? <laughs> like, like I could just go in the garage and get an axe and like burn it all down if I see Moana, Frozen, like any Disney. I've movie seen ever. Frozen. I've never yeah. seen Moana. And those are at least better, right? But then there are like really bad. Like my son was obsessed with this one called Dino King. Yeah. And it's essentially a Korean movie where they just filmed like pan shots of the jungle, and then later drew in the worst dinosaurs ever. Love and it. just had like a voiceover of some kids like, my mom got eaten. Where do I find food now? And that shit is like two hours long. It's like Velocipaster. <laughs> I fucking wish it <laughs> was Velocipaster. Yeah. If my kid would watch Velocipaster, we instantly <laughs> become better friends. I, I'd recommend that movie to anybody <laughs> listening. It's amazing. Velocipaster. It's on Amazon Prime. <laughs> I watched it the other day. It's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, so we're always trying to find like the next kids thing. Sure. And some nights we're like, all right, let's watch a movie. And you're like, I can't fucking do it anymore. Like Disney Plus can suck a dick. I need a new app, right? Yeah. And so you start scrolling, like, what are, like, the oddest kids' movies from when we were little? And the other day, we came across Ed, right? Yeah. So this is a classic Matt LeBlanc is a guy who classic never- Classic Matt LeBlanc yeah. vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> Matt LeBlanc at his absolute hottest, going from the biggest TV show in the history of TV to Ed. Yeah. Ed, where yeah. he's, like, a farm boy who's never played baseball and becomes a minor <laughs> leaguer, right? Who's a pitcher. <laughs> and because he's got the the yips, right? Yeah. And people are crushing dingers off him. The manager's like, I'll have him go pick up this chimpanzee at the bus stop, and this will solve it. <laughs> and I told you, though, we were watching it. Yeah. My kids were kind of like, what the fuck is this movie? But it ends up like they're entertained, right? Yeah. at the end of the day, it's a monkey doing monkey things, and they liked it. But I told you, that movie has so much more shit going on. Yeah, it's terrible. Than you were, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, There's a yeah, scene. Yeah. This is the scene when it turned for me, right? Because I'm kind of watching I'm like, yeah, it's just... Uh, a handsome guy uh, and a fucking terrible monkey suit doing baseball things. Right. There's a point, though, where it <laughs> breaks. A, a great, yeah, There's a point where it breaks. It breaks bad for adult or bad for kids, good for adults, right? Yeah. So they're trying to sign Ed into the game, right? Because that's what I forgot, too, is he was, uh, I believe they said he was uh, Lou Gehrig's monkey. <laughs> So, or no, Mickey Mantle's monkey. Mickey Mantle's so monkey. So he just like learned through osmosis how to play baseball. It's not a bad father to yeah, have. If or you're like a Mickey Mantle, player. right? Yeah. And then he gets shipped around as like a sideshow or whatever. Well, he tries to check into the game. 
And I got like, ah, fuck it. We'll do it. Whatever. And it'll help cure Matt LeBlanc by proxy because Ed is an amazing baseball player, we find out. Yeah. They try to check him in the game, and this is where it turns, and you're like, wow, they. this is a director who's like, oh, my God, I'm on my last legs. I'm directing Ed. I'm going to get my, like, moment in this movie where people know I'm narratively serious. Yeah. And so they walk out. And like, We're going to check Ed into third base, and the umpire is a black guy. Sure. And he's like, oh, you raps, you rascals, right? <laughs> Like, what a what a fun, kitschy idea. I like it. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden, the other manager storms out, and he's like, what the fuck? He's like, integrity of baseball. Right? He's like Keith Olbermann, right? Yeah. Like a Southern Keith Olbermann, yeah, essentially. Yeah. You know, with a lot more racism, we find out. And so the movie takes the scene, right, this one scene, <laughs> to have the, the other manager say, these like these things are taking over baseball. And yeah. they cut to like some Latino players and the black umpire. <laughs> and he says baseballs for everyone throws the fucking racist guy out of the game turns around and they do like a michael bay spinning shot from yeah. beneath him he's like baseball is the great equalizer everyone can play and i was like oh my god ed is diving into racism touching on heavy things <laughs> heavy things i'll tell you the, the real <laughs> it's an un unbut- but the rest of the movie has like five of these like well, hot yeah. button issues buried in this weirdest kids movie the real story here is with this movie is <laughs> That's that that movie is proof of how powerful and big of a show Friends was. Yeah. Because, absolutely. Because any other actor signs on for that movie and then they see it and they're like, Man, he's done. Not working in the industry. <laughs> that was terrible. <laughs> Not Matthew LeBlanc though. He was yeah. on like it didn't even affect his career in the Zero. slightest. And he did like but that, four that, shitty movies. Oh yeah. Like, but that manager the lost has his manager <laughs> like his manager deserves like a fucking award for selling yeah. selling him on that script because yeah. like, hey Matt, you're at the height of your career. It wasn't like Matt was like, hey, you know, now that I can do pretty much anything I want, do you still have that <laughs> script about the monkey playing baseball? Yeah. Has anybody <laughs> has anybody taken that yet? Because on second thought, I'd like to jump in on that. <laughs> He's like, I heard there are these hot young guys like a Terrence Malick, a Quentin Tarantino. They're doing cool yeah. stuff. That's pretty cool, but have you ever seen an umpire defend racism, you know, via chimpanzee in a minor league game? It's unfucking believable that that's buried in. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's an incredible career move that, like, didn't end it. It's it's amazing to me that he's still. Well, you're just like, there had to be, I don't know what he passed on. It, well. It had to be so much. Yeah. Like, there, there's a whole documentary to be had on Ed. Yeah. Leading up to this reunion. Of, like, my wife was, like, an obsessed well, they're not having a, I don't think they're having okay. a 25th anniversary for Ed. I don't think that's in the works. Maybe. I don't think they're having a reunion. My kids liked Ed. There could be a great <laughs> uh, revivification I of Ed. I don't, think, I don't think that party's happening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm leading the charge now. I might make you do my other show, The I'm Film Alchemist, sure the and we're just going to do a whole now. episode yeah. on Ed. No. This was the, I'll tell you another part, and Amy's going to be pissed. So my wife is watching, and I look over, and she's kind of got this, like, befuddled look on her face. Like, she's squinting, and, like, something's not right. Sure. And I was she's like. She's watching Ed. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> well, yeah, she's watching Ed. Like, there are so many things to be confused by. It seems like a standard look yeah. to me when that movie is being viewed. Like, they actually had, and it <laughs> happened, ironically, when they decide, they're deciding how to, like, share the apartment together, right? Right. And Ed goes in, and he, like, decides he's going to take a dump in Matt LeBlanc's toilet I love how and matt leblanc's mad about that is <laughs> it's like an odd couple movie i love yeah, it they, they just did everything God, it's so strange <laughs> i was like they've missed the scene where ed is like he's like hey are you beating it to my playboys <laughs> like that's what could have happened Bro. but matt leblanc is mad that someone's pooping in a toilet which is weird enough and then they animate a green like cloud of stench and i was like okay maybe this is why amy's not enjoying herself yeah if i came home today and my dog was taking a shit in the toilet it'd be the happiest day the of my best life. day of my life it'd be the happiest i don't have to walk out in the yard with those little bags <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but no, so Amy looks at me and she says in all earnestness, is that a real monkey? And I was like, this is an opportunity. Yeah, it was a practical effect back then. Yeah. And that I, was before yeah. the CGI. <laughs> and I was like, that monkey has excellent comedic timing. <laughs> Second best monkey movie I've seen. If that was a real chimpanzee, Behind that s- Matt LeBlanc gets his face eaten off, right? Like, he's like, oh, I can't shit in your toilet. I'll murder you. <laughs> but I love just watching my wife. And it took her about. The rest of the movie, she's like, no, that's not a real monkey. I was like, what threw it off? Yeah. Like the throwing a baseball to first base. And then the next scene, she'd be like, I don't know. I'm not <laughs> buying it. I'm not buying it. It was probably the best like <laughs> subplot of the movie watching. I love it. But I love I, it. I'm just saying for all of you parents out there that suffer, finding a weird movie like that 
that makes those crazy choices. Yeah. Uh, to watch with I'll your kids. I'll tell you, one of my favorite kids' movie. movies ever, which, like, when you think back on it, is a pretty strange kids' movie, is Stand By Me. Because it's, yeah, it's, it's not just, a kids' movie. It's about kids going to find a dead body. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's. And that's we all thing. saw and it and we're like, like, dude, wouldn't that be it, awesome? That's an amazing. That's an incredible movie. <laughs> yeah, right. I love it. I love it to death. Yeah. But, like, when you think back on it, like. If somebody pitched that today, they'd be like, "Get the f- you're, get out of yeah. here! You're you're, yeah. you're fucking fired." And where are the helicopter yeah. parents? I'm I'm confused. <laughs> you know what I mean? Where? How much bubble wrap are none they of wearing? those? Like all my favorite kids, none of those would get made today. Goonies wouldn't get made today. Yeah, well, Monster Squad, Monster Squad. like Monster Squad, Monster is Squad's an, an underrated fucking kids movie. It's a to me, one. it's the better version of Goonies. I think it's uh, a no vastly way. superior. I don't. Film. I wouldn't call it. It's a different. I mean, it's well, different. I was like a monster movie kid. Yeah, right. So like that was just more my Wolf jam. Wolfman's got nards. Yeah, well, that's why I'm like they have Horace like fat kid as he's called by his friends yeah. just racking a shotgun and blowing monsters away i was like could you fucking imagine the uprage today yeah or the outrage upra- outrage if that Upra- happened oh, today outrage is a new thing yeah. you just invented no it's insane there are so many movies that like i watched as a kid like i love this cartoon the black cauldron never saw that one. yeah it's like one of those obscure disney movies i've had it for years on dvd but like i found it on disney, disney plus, plus. Like, yeah, i'll yeah. watch it with the kids and my kid was like weeping <laughs> He's like, this is so fucking scary. I'm like, oh, yeah, they do have, like, a zombie king. Yeah, and, like, well, like, I mean, even... That, Pino- yeah, it's not adorable. Pinocchio is like, a whole movie about human trafficking. And, <laughs> right. I mean, it's a... Pinocchio, come here and get drunk and get become the- donkey. Hey, you want some candy? Get in the van! Dude, that, you know? that, like... Hey, kids, there's a place where all of your dreams come true, and then adults will use that to, like, turn you into animals and slaves. Yeah. Scary. It's incredible. But that's what I mean. I think Ed is in the pantheon of tackling... Ed's, the big uh, like, this was something I was telling you. I've always said I had this perfect movie theorem, and Beethoven is one of the few perfect movies. It's an, a flawless film for what it's supposed to be. Right? It's a great movie. But I got to talking to some guys at the party, like, yeah, I love Beethoven. I want to show that to my kids. I'm like, don't do that. Do they? You have a dog? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, don't do that. I'm like, why? I'm like, that whole movie, the whole premise of that movie, is a man who wants to kill his family dog but doesn't have the guts, right? Yeah. And then a scientist who sees the size of the dog and says. Man, I could torture the shit out of that thing. That's the entire premise of yeah. Beethoven. Yeah. It's just that scientist is Charles Grodin's fantasy. <laughs> Fucking Charles Grodin. <laughs> Love him. Uh, he was uh he was my favorite in um uh So I Married an Axe Murderer. Oh my god, yeah. When when the co- he, Carl, Charles Grodin's driving the car and the cop runs up and he's like, I'm commandeering your vehicle and Grodin goes, No. Yeah. <laughs> just, no. Well, he was like that. It's, for the, it's the epitome of Charles Grodin's disposition in yeah. life. He just goes, no. Well, yeah, he was like, because he, him and like John Lithgow fall in this, like, they're the best, like, wild dad. Oh, or I love uncle. Lithgow. Like, yeah, the yeah. guys that are, like, not having it anymore. But Lithgow had this whole other thing. He's like, I can also be in Ricochet, yeah. samurai sword fighting, uh, Jesse the Body Ventura in jail with yeah. phone book armor. Like, that's the extra yeah. gear that Grodin did. Not a have. weird, not a weird movie, but. <laughs> One of my favorite childhood movies featuring John Lithgow is Harry and the Hendersons. Oh, God, yeah. One of my favorite movies of all time. Great movie. I love it. Yeah. They get a Sasquatch and, you know, he's watching like Three Stooges in the living room. It's amazing. (laughs) My name is George Hen. (laughs) It just starts with like them totally hitting him with a car, right? Like that could be a very different movie. Yeah. No, I... It's just, I it's love weird. I love those old kid movies. But that's what I mean. Like, you just don't find them anymore. All the movies now are like the same oh, thing, right? Uh, parents die at the start. Yeah. We do some songs, and at the end, you're like, it's cool that my parents died. I'm going to have a dope life. That's <laughs> yeah. every fucking kid's movie now. now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's like, I went back and watched uh, the original Ninja Turtles movie the other day. Right. Uh, totally forgot Sam Rockwell was like one of the main kids in the... Was he really? Yeah. And, when you know, when they go... So when... Um, uh, April O'Neil's boss, right? His son like defects and he's running Joins off the with foot. the Foot Clan yeah. or whatever. But when they're all when all the kids are down there playing the games and shit and like that underground layer where the Foot Clan trains, the dude that walks up with this with the carton of cigarettes is fucking Sam Rockwell. No shit. Total mind blower. Wow. Never dude, never that's realized amazing. that. Yeah yeah. That's he's, fucking yeah. amazing. But that's also wow. one of my. It's not it. If looking, I mean, there's kids like smoking cigarettes. Yeah. It's it's not a great kids movie now by now standards, <laughs> but it's an amazing. But one of my favorite parts in any movie ever exists in that movie, and it's at the end 
when they knock Shredder off the building and he falls into the into the garbage truck. Right. And Casey Jones just pulls the lever and goes, "Oops, uh, oops, <laughs> Moida, it's, oops." It's, it's <laughs> one of my favorite scenes. Just that, la- oops. <laughs> It's so fucking good. Yeah. And Brooklyn rejoiced. You know? <laughs> God. But that's what I mean. Like, kids' movies back in the day were cool because the kids were able to be, like, characters. Oh, yeah. Right? And it's just not, like, I don't know. Well, like, like, I saw something, like, Inside Out with my kids. Yeah. And it's the weirdest fucking movie because my kid's watching. Like, my kid doesn't understand the inner turmoil of emotions. Yeah. You know? Like, he knows well, yeah. I'm sad, I'm mad. But he's not watching. Like, when they cut to the cartoon inside of her head. He thinks it's a different movie. Right. He does not understand. Understand like suspended reality. Yeah, like yeah, kids yeah. don't understand. I mean, hell, I know adults. Like I'm on Twitter. Like there are adults that don't understand how emotions work sure. and shit. Yeah. And it's just who the fuck is that movie for? Right. That feels like one of those like, hey, parents, we're going to slide you one. <laughs> and you're like, also, I don't want to go to the kids movie. To be like, oh, this is depressing as fuck, too. Well, yeah. Like, great. <laughs> well, yeah. But, it, it, but it's like that. Like, I remember I remember watching Aladdin yeah. when I was a kid. And I remember my parents like hysterically laughing at that movie and I'd never understood why until I grew up and realized who Robin Williams was. Right. And then you go back and you're like, you realize he was the voice of the genie. Yeah. And he was just delivering adult jokes after adult joke. Yeah. And that and just and just murdering. Like it was one of the best sets of his life. Right. But but no eight year old kid got got the material he was None putting out. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, so you go back and look at it. But yeah, it's. Well, like the I Tupperware mean, jokes flying right over the our turtles head. movie, man, is like it just has me too written all over it because like the whole time Casey Sorry. Jones is just walking around to April O'Neil go, hey, toots, hey, broad, <laughs> like and and then she falls in love with him. <laughs> like yeah. It's uh, it's the most unlikely yeah. love story of all time. I'm just saying as far as meat cutes go, right? Perhaps murder in the back of a garbage truck in a dark in New York alley. Not a high on the list. Yeah. <laughs> but well, that's when April's like, Good lord, I'll get tell you, over here. I'll tell you they <laughs> they did they did make a decision halfway through that movie though, because you don't meet Casey Jones until about halfway through yeah. when, when uh Raphael's out uh going on he's blowing off some steam and then he has to fight some foot and Casey Jones helps him out. But before that they save it. The turtles save April O'Neil. Yeah. And and for a second, you're like, she's going to fuck one of these turtles. Oh, dude. Like for, for a second, because sure. like it starts to like turn. And then and then they then they just rush Casey Jones and like, no, we got to have her fuck a human. We can't have her fucking the turtles. <laughs> don't worry. She's just going to <laughs> get. Don't get me wrong. Like he was a great addition to the movie, but I don't think he was re- like the produ- <laughs> they, were, they were committed. And then like one yeah. producer's like, wait a minute. We gotta we gotta do some rewrites here. Like we can't have her fucking a turtle. She likes white guy dick. Here's the other an extra side of harassment. Here's the other piece of <laughs> trivia that I would have gotten wrong about that movie. Uh, Corey Feldman was a voice of the, one of the turtles. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Which turtle was he the voice of? Uh, Donatello. Right? Yeah. See, yeah. I in my I had like the Mandela effect. Seems like he I be always a was Michael. I yeah. like even when I started watching, I was like, oh, good, Feldman yeah. is Michael. And I, then he wasn't Michelangelo, and it blew my mind. Because I, I totally remembered him as Michelangelo. <laughs> Feldman was the smart yeah. one? Question yeah. mark. What? Yeah, what the Donatello's fuck? Donatello's my favorite turtle, by the way. So. And I'm not saying that to shit on Feldman. I actually have written a script before, specifically with like, this is going to bring Feldman back. Oh, like, I love I Corey that Feldman, idea man. Because I was like, just to spend time with that guy and hear stories, <laughs> I would in, be super He's in. in two of my favorite kids' movies. Yeah. Goonies and Stand no, By No, he me. killed it at that <laughs> era. He, but this, is, this gets back to an interesting thing, right? I rewatched recently for uh, the Film Alchemist podcast that I do, Howard the Duck. Or no, Longbox Sessions, our comic book. Uh, Howard the Duck is incredible. And my, I remember my parents just gave me the VHS. Like, oh, it's like a fucking cartoon duck, right? It's like the adventure. It was a brutally dark movie. Yeah, right? Holy shit. And that's the thing. When you get older and you read the comics, you're like, oh, this was never for kids. They just were like, I think it was Spielberg and Lucas that jammed that thing through. And they're like, oh, "Oh, yeah, yeah, we want the E.T. stank. Like, we'll do this. But so it starts off and he's looking at like porno mags, right? Yeah. Like you see like a, a duck porno mag. But there's a scene in the movie that I totally forgot where he's just getting like an earth job, right? Right. And uh Leah Thompson, is that who it is who's the main actress? I can't she remember. She definitely is amped to fuck him. And oh, by yeah. the way, not there's not a lot of context to this, but I went on like a yeah. Googling spree about like a year and a half ago just with like duck penises. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
and bird penises in general. Because I was like, we, I had this debate. We were talking about like eggs, I think. Yeah. And they're like, well, eggs are born, and if they're not fertilized, you can eat them. Like, the old, when the fuck did they? I was like, the old just, duck dick. Yeah, I was like, do they just walk around like fucking rubbing their dicks on the eggs we're eating? Like, maybe that's weird. So I was like, I got to figure this out. Yeah. And there are birds that actually have like those tentacle dicks. And they will bond them. In oh, and they, yeah, they like latch on. And they will fly all the way to the ground. And if they don't nut fast enough and separate, they just fall to their deaths. Like just bird don't. fucking is infinitely fascinating. <laughs> but this this movie says, and this is the, the fun subplot now that we're older, is essentially landing on hell on earth is Cleveland. <laughs> he lands in Cleveland and it just is this hellscape of all the worst things about humanity. And he meets this chick who's like this super hot, like punk rock girl. And she's yeah. like, yeah, I'll fuck this duck. Yeah. Well, he gets a human job. Well, yeah. And I totally forgot this part. He's working at a mud spa, but he is 100% a jizz mopper. <laughs> like a million and a half so... percent a jizz mopper. And there's a scene when it goes amok, and there's a guy who definitely gets hit with gallons and gallons of fake jizz. Oh, yeah. And I was like, that was on a VHS tape <laughs> that my parents. It's incredible. It's and they would miss that part and then walk in and be like, oh, it's a duck and an alien monster. This is perfect for our son. There's, there's an Always Sunny episode <laughs> where Frank and Charlie are in the, they're in a spa. And Charlie's like, points at somebody's like, what's that for? And, and Frank goes, that's for the guys that come in and wipe down the loads. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and then later on in the episode, this guy just walks into the spa and he goes, I'm the guy that wipes down the loads. <laughs> That was Howard the Duck's job <laughs> that in was, Cleveland. That was Howard the Duck's job. And that's what I like is that kids' movies of our era were telling us life is going to be really hard, right? Yeah. Like, life is going to be hard and scary. There are dead bodies. You might end up a jizz mopper in Cleveland, <laughs> yeah. you know? But, like, hey, there's a yeah. good thing. You might end up with Leah Thompson. There was no kids of- <laughs> doing, like, the renegade dance. No. They were, no. They were running around trying to find dead bodies and... <laughs> Yeah. Could you imagine? It was an amazing time. Was what great, Kiefer time. Sutherland, the bully, and Stand Ace. By Me would do if he saw a kid TikToking yeah. on the side of the road. It's his brother Ace. He pulled yeah. a gun on him. There would be yeah. another dead body. Yeah. That whole movie wouldn't be interesting because they'd be like, you want to see a dead body? It's like, no, there's 15 TikToks. That movie's got everything. The there's fat shaming in that movie. I mean, it's yeah. got everything. It's bad. Boom, ba, ba, boom. But great. It's great. I <laughs> love those ama- movies. That's a, a, a Stephen King wrote that. as a short yeah. short story that Keith I think it was called King. The Corpse. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I miss that era. Though. Richard Dreyfus was the narrator. Yeah, he was like the dad. Yeah, I'm but that's Richard I mean. Dreyfus. I can't even hardly show these movies to my kid yet. You know what I well, mean? Well, yeah. I mean, I I dabbled a bit. <laughs> yeah, I watched Goonies. My nephew's seven. And I watched Goonies with him. Yeah, maybe like a year ago when he was like six. But he he gets like he's smart enough that he's like, yeah. My kid's like he understands that it's a movie. Yeah, he's just yeah. like, can we fast forward to the sloth scenes? And but I'm I like, mean, yeah, I watched cool. Goonies a hundred times and I turned out kick ass. Yeah, I mean, look we're dominating me. life, I'm killing it. <laughs> I'm deaf. When I look in the mirror, I'm like, I hope this is all that my kids achieve. <laughs> <laughs> all right, what else you got? What else was going on? I don't know. Week? I just want to talk about movies now. Just talk I about just, movies. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I don't know. Wilder got his face punched in. I've seen way better movies than that. Speaking of uh, <laughs> finding a dead body. <laughs> <laughs> right? Pro segue. Bada boom. Oops. Dude, but I was telling you, the fight is one thing. But all the other stuff I thought was fascinating. Because I, I was asking, did you see there's footage in the middle of the fight after he busted Wilder's ear wide open, right? Yeah. He licked the fucking blood. Yeah, that's gross. Off Deontay Wilder's ear. And I think he was kind of whispering like, you're dead. I don't even like my that's own. That's such a fucking power move i don't even like my own blood oh and ear blood has to be some of the worst most disgusting blood yeah there's but wax in yeah, it and ugh, shit. Ugh, ugh, ugh. yeah it's gross but i was like imagine getting your fucking ass beaten that bad right yeah and i know they're pro fighters so like that's part of the job but you are this unstoppable killing machine and you're getting your fucking ass beat by this guy who was like a year and a half ago like a 400 pound drug addict yeah and he's pummeling you his Which fucking, is, you know, love handles bouncing around. Sounds like, like an oxymoron, like a 400-pound drug addict. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you're doing the wrong drugs. You're doing the wrong drugs. Uh, but it's just so crazy. He fucking beat his ass, licked the fucking blood. And yeah. I was just like, that's that's fucking insane. Yeah, it's, well, and the people were mad they threw in the towel. I was like, that was like turning into like a horror movie. <laughs> yeah. Like, you should have thrown that fucking towel in even earlier. <laughs> I know boxing fans hate that, but yeah. I'm like, hey, man, we don't need to see I the saw like, a meme and it was like 30 for 30. It was the <laughs> it was the uh, the head of the guy from um, Big Trouble in Little China. <laughs> it was like head right before it explodes or whatever. Right. And, it, and it just the said furious. Deontay Wilder was like, why are you throwing in the towel? And it was just like, <laughs> 
Oh, uh, another great of, movie. Yeah, movies that my parents left me Old alone to Jack watch. Burton. You tell him checks in the mail. Yeah, that's a you pay your movie. dues. Yeah, yeah, I paid my dues. What checks your hero in the mail? Do? He's a long haul trucker. Oh, he's who amazing. Constantly writes uh, bad checks, gambles, drinks, <laughs> tries to bang a chick. And that one was specifically a- at the end of the movie. He's like. I don't want romance. Thanks for the poon. Yeah. And leaves. Like, that's yeah. the whole movie. It's incredible. And that the is way, the best movie. You know Jack Burton called his dick also the Pork Chop Express. Oh, the Pork Chop the pork Express. Chop yeah, Express. oh, yeah. But that one was not a kid's. They would. They, they weren't throwing that one at kids. But kids were allowed to watch well, it. Because our parents were just like, oh, there's wizards in it? That's good for you. Yeah. Well, my, I mean, my parents used to let me watch, like, every movie with them. They would just do the thing where it was like, Cover your eyes. <laughs> if like titties yeah. are about to come like, out or something. Yeah, Bob, I'm gonna do <laughs> yeah. that. And yeah, you just do this thing. Yeah, like I'm covered up. Yeah. And know. they didn't give a fuck. They knew. Yeah. They just wanted to act like they were good parents. Yeah, your parents <laughs> wanted you to uh do yeah. the Mike Fires <laughs> and look away while looking. You, you should be the one apologizing, Nick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they hit me with Mike the Carlos Fires? Correa. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't stop me from seeing the tits specifically enough, Mom. <laughs> Yeah. If you did, if you saw if you knew the tits were coming, you need to shut the fuck up. Okay, Carlos. <laughs> what that a guy. Like a, that seems like a logical way to appropriate blame here. Sure. Altuve got hit by a pitch uh, yesterday. <laughs> starting early, starting in spring. Although I saw that it didn't, it hit him in the foot, so it didn't look. Yeah. If somebody, I mean, if a pitcher's really going at him, I mean, I don't think they're going to throw it the head, but they're going to put it in a place. Yeah. It's going to sting a little bit. Yeah. You know, not that the foot doesn't hurt. But, I was going to say, I'd rather take it anywhere. But it was kind of a gray shot, so it wasn't not like, the head, I think the second worst place I think anything, to take it would be the ankle. Yeah, anything below the chin's fair game. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if I if I had my druthers, I yeah. hope they're all taking it in the ass. You know, like baseball. Yeah. Like, I don't want anyone to get, like, I don't think head hunting's okay. No, you don't want to, like, get somebody's. Is absolutely hard on the Astros as anyone, right? Like right. I think we are both of the accord of this is actually the worst scandal because it tarnishes everything the game's for, right? Yeah. So all that said, right? I fucking hate the Astros. I hate what they did. I hate the fucking brazenness. I hate their stupid fucking fans. I hate everything about I don't this. hate I don't but hate if you tell me that someone like a Madison Bumgarner, right? Or as I call right. him skinny Brian McCann. Right. Is like I'll take this, you know, I'm a rodeo guy. I'll handle this situation. <laughs> and he's going to fucking drill one at like Berg- Bregman's head. I don't like that. No, I'm not in support of that. I don't. And, and, that's the, you can fucking kill a guy. I know everyone's always like, you guys always say you could kill people. Yeah, you can kill someone with a fastball. Yeah. Like if you stood here and someone threw a fastball right in your fucking face, you could die from that. Yeah. Like, that's oh, yeah. That's true. That's serious. Those, yeah, yeah. I think people, I think we don't understand how <sighs> fucking, like, if you've ever been to a game and you sat in the right spot, when you see those fucking fastballs, yeah. And you hear the sound of it hitting that mitt. I, it's fucking scary. I took I took a uh, uh, pitch off the head when I was in I don't know maybe like low, I was like high school Babe Ruth or something. Yeah, and that was like a 50, 60 mile an hour pitch, right. and that shit hurt. Yeah, these dudes are throwing a fucking. I mean, they're throwing a hundred now. You double know what it. I mean? yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, with pinpoint yeah. accuracy. With pinpoint accuracy. Well, dude, yeah, we yeah. did that video with. Uh, <laughs> Scarborough, right? Yeah. We did our softball videos, and the ladies came out. Yeah, fuck that. Uh, she was like, you guys want to try to hit a pitch off me. Yeah, and we failed. And she threw fucking underhand fastball. She hadn't played in a couple years, and it was still fucking terrifying. Heat. Absolute heat. Well, it's like I hit that age where you're like, oh, I'm just not willing to stand in anymore. Yeah. Like, and, and, I, <laughs> and, you know, I do want to make a distinction uh, back to something you said. I don't hate all of the Astros fans. It's the deniers. Sure, and they're st- and they're still Great and they're still waiting around in the fucking in the shallow end. Yeah, you know, like still going. There's no proof. Yeah. Well, there is. Yeah. Fella, it's and the play the player the players admitted it already. <laughs> yeah. Like, let it go. Yeah. Like, hey guys, let's do the velcro on your shoes a little and less they, tight. So and we they can call get the, the people that are mad. Why they're like, stop whining. Like, yeah. well, you cheated everybody <laughs> like yeah. fuck you yeah just just bend you know take yeah. it on the chin and move on yeah they li- <sighs> they they just devalued everything broke careers yeah artificially i mean like i love thing- i love the colts yeah as much as i love any team i watch every fucking game for the last 25 years right that came out tomorrow that they were cheating i wouldn't defend them to anybody yeah i, w- well, I don't know that i would like- still watch them but i'd be like yeah. i would i like i'd be like fuck those yeah. guys I hate him. You yeah. know, like, well, I had this reckoning yeah. as a Steelers fan where you're like, 
when Roethlisberger's shit came out. And I wanted to be like, ah, oh, there's not a lot of proof. It's his said, she said. And then, you know, you do that for like a little bit in your brain. So you're like, well, yeah, it hurts. Like we're emotionally it's like the stages of grief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then all of a sudden you think about it and you're like, my fucking quarterback, a millionaire. To even be in that situation fucking makes me furious. Don't have thought, sex with girls yeah. in public bathrooms. And after a while, you're just like, all right, so you told me, like, retrospectively, like, he was kicked out of the league and never got to play again after that. Yeah. And that might be unfair now because, you know, whatever. Yeah. But I would just be like, yeah, man. Like, I'm old enough now. You're like, yeah, some things are just more important. Right? Yeah. And, like, if the Astros had just come out and been like, you know what, guys, it's a really competitive game. Like, if they did the speech at the end of Blue Chips, bringing yeah. back movies. A movie that I was in the crowd for, by yeah. the way. Frankfurt, Indiana. The hot dogs, that's where they filmed yeah. uh, that fucking movie. But Nick Nolte just gets out, and he does, like, a, he's doing, like, a fucking, uh, who was that? Lenny Bruce routine, right? Yeah. He's, like, sitting on the stage. He's like, could I have a cigarette? I got uh, old man voice to do in 20 years. You know, <laughs> and he's, like, he's just sitting there, and he's like, you know, it's just, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. And I was... I was pushed too far, yeah. right? Like, I couldn't get it back, and I cheated. Like, anything. Yeah. So that's why. Well, uh, right. So what, what, if they get hit with 500 fastballs in the back, yeah, I don't care. Yeah. But I don't want anyone to get, because at the end, it is still just a game. Yeah. Like, I'm not mad enough that I think people exactly. should be in jail or murdered yeah. or physically, like, broken in half. But I think these, you and know, listen, muscle-bound a, guys can take a couple shots in I'm the back. I'm a Reds fan. We didn't get gypped out of anything. We, you know, like. <laughs> So well, I can't only have a personal yeah. vendetta, but like uh, <laughs> I'm a Brewers fan. So you're like, if only they were in the NL, it would make of, me feel much. Speaking better. of Nick Nolte, it's one of the only impressions <laughs> that I can kind of do. And it's from Blue Chips. Yeah. And it's when he goes, uh, let me see if I can do this. Here we go. This is big. here we go. Hell, it wasn't a, it wasn't a car. Happy it was a fully loaded Lexus. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, hell. Oh, hell. <laughs> Put them boys in the shit. Yeah, I love Nick Nolte, man. We should try, maybe with like our, you know, obviously we're actors. We make short YouTube content. Yeah. We're very accomplished. Absolutely. We should put our minds together and maybe you can do Nick Nolte and I'll figure out like to Ooh. do another Nick Nolte. Uh, <laughs> like maybe I'll do Eddie Murphy. I don't know. Ooh, okay. I don't we'll think do I've got the hours. Job. <laughs> yeah. To keep an Eddie Murphy level of intensity for yeah. like a whole pot, I don't think I could do. I don't think I can do an Eddie Murphy. <laughs> maybe I'll do Barbra Streisand <laughs> from Prince of Tides. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Back when Nick Nolte somehow, speaking of robberies, I want to know the uh, cheating hell. scandal by t- behind him winning the world's sexiest man that year. <laughs> hey, he was a good-looking fella back in the day. You ever seen Cape Fear? I mean, okay. Good-looking guy. Was Nick Nolte a good-looking guy? Yes. Yeah, but, but that he, was like the thing. That's what I say, right? It's like when my people got mad at us on the pod because I said you can't be a 10 if you listen to country music, right? <laughs> yeah. And what I like is that guys find girls that are sixes or sevens and to them, they're tens, and I'm like, that's fine, man. If to you, she's a ten, that's great, Beauty's man. I'm not gonna shit on your love, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, there's math, and like, you know, there are bars set and whatever. Like, well, it's a, it's your a, girlfriend is not a ten in the same world where, like, it's you know, a subjective Carmen thing, existed. anyway. So I don't know if it is. It you, is. You can, but that's what I mean, right? It's like when I, you know, eat a cheeseburger, and you're like, this won't make me even fatter. I worked hard today. It's yeah, like, you didn't like you didn't work out hard. Like I've seen a video of The Rock. Like I know what working out hard. Right, is. but that was like, but that was like the sexy back then was like kind of the rough, rough around the edges guy. Right. But what I think, like, Nick Nolte has that same thing of, like, like when my mom was obsessed with Alan Jackson. Yeah. And if you've ever seen him, you're like, yeah, you can just drive to Florida and hit every fucking rest stop and you'll find <laughs> and you'll an find Alan, Alan Jackson. Jackson. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Like, that guy's <laughs> everywhere, so he's not a 10. But he's the obtainable, uh, yeah. attractive guy. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, there are people that are more attractive because you can imagine yourself ending up with Being them. with, yeah, yeah. Right. You can imagine them yeah. saying yes to you. Yeah. Because you're like, I see you're Heidi like, Klum. I have a shot. Yeah. Like I had a real Heidi Klum phase when I was like younger. Yeah. And you're just like at this age, you're you should be self-aware enough to be like, I feel like I would have very little to offer her. <laughs> right. Like if we met like she's into costumes and I've seen yeah. weird movies. That might be all we that's have. like Natalie Portman for me. I've yeah. had a, I've had a thing for her forever. But yeah. it's like even if I conned her into saying yes, she's like Harvard educated. Yeah. Has accomplished like all these things. Yeah. In her, and I like I don't even know what I would yeah. do. I'm not going to satisfy her. Yeah. <laughs> you know I mean? Well, like, even guys who are like, I mean, I like you want to really, talk about yeah. Goonies? And she's yeah. like, no. Well, you're, it's like, there are dumb guys who are like, I could break that pussy up. <laughs> and you're like, do you think that's what Natalie Portman's looking for? Mm-hmm. Is some guy who can just break the pussy up and then be like, 
I'm going to go watch uh, UFC highlights and fucking <laughs> smash wings on your $10,000, like, you know, duvet or whatever. Is that even a th- What's a duvet? Uh, a duvet is, that, duvet that's a is like thing. a cover, I think. That's yeah. a bed thing, right? See, that's how I, I don't even know what that is. Like so a duvet cover leave. is like the thing you put yeah. over, like, your I was thinking of comforter those, or your those fancy couches that don't have the backs on them because people uh, aren't I don't know fat what that's, enough to I don't know what that's called. Like, yeah. a, I don't know. A resting, a, a spell chair? Yeah. I remember, like, uh, <laughs> my one of my friends growing up, like, they had, like, this really fancy house. It wasn't like... And when I say fancy, I just mean like, like they had one room and it just had like one of those, they call it like a sun bed or something. <laughs> and it just, it just looked, but it just looked like a bed that was made for like an oversized doll. Right. And it's like, what's the function of this? Like, oh, it's decorative. Like, yeah. cool. Well, it has cool but words like in it. Like fancy so in that way. And like they had the living room that like you couldn't go in. Like, you know, you can't Bro. sit on that couch. I had friends like, that had why, that. Yeah. And, and I'm like. like P.S. We live in fucking Indiana. Yeah. Like, like I grew up with three brothers. Anyone, there was yeah. nothing off limits in my house, and yeah. if it was, it got ruined. Yeah. You're like, so my mom just stopped putting rules on shit, and was just like, whatever. Just try yeah. not to kill each other. Well, yeah, yeah. we do the podcast here <laughs> in my house, and me and Amy have hit the point now. You're like, all right, our kids are five and two. Uh, we're just not gonna worry. They can break everything. I for feel like, like the my next mom three years. Yeah. And then we'll be like, now's when we like start making our house like for adults. I feel like my mom it's came impossible. home from work every day and was like, thank God they're not dead. Right. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> we didn't have babysitters oh, back then. God. She's like, holy shit, they're all three yeah. alive. What a day. <laughs> what Push a day. It. Yeah. <laughs> we got that ball one more yard down <laughs> the field. I did remember there's something huge that happened that we did not talk about. And I'm ashamed I don't already have this Google. Did you hear Antonio Brown's new song? Oh, uh, the Andrew Luck song? Entitled I, Andrew Luck. I did not hear it yet. I have not heard it yet. But I, but coming from Antonio Brown, I can only assume it's a banger. I can only assume it slaps <laughs> because everything that guy's done in the last year is just incredible. Uh, All right. So I have lyrics here, hopefully. Let's see. <laughs> so I was like, why is he going at Andrew Luck? I think it was like... Uh, like a friendly thing, wasn't it? Here we it? go. I got the game, and I'm not on stuck. I'm out the way like Andrew Luck. Ooh. Right? That's <laughs> Everybody deep. calling my phone, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only lyrics they put on this lyric. <laughs> Whoever was transcribing the song's like, that's it. I quit. <laughs> you know, I kind of want to just play the song on the pod so that we can get a copyright infringement from Antonio Brown. <laughs> And then maybe we have to go to court and maybe he shows up and then that's our chance to meet Antonio Brown. Yeah. And pitch him like, come get in our videos, bro. Well, we can debrief like, him and be we like, we need yeah. this. We have a lot of fucking questions. We like, got con- a lot. I got content for you, bub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your team sucks. You should join the Kent Murphy. Empire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that thing that, you know, it's an outside shot of, of, of uh, meeting him. You know, yeah. I think it'd be fun. I know. I, I just, I thought of you. We'll get Madison Bumgarner like, to rope him. What's the worst part about, the Colts fandom, right? Actually losing Andrew Luck or now having this song memorializing the loss of Andrew Luck. That's incredible. Well, <laughs> fucking Jim Ur- Ursay came out yesterday and was like, I, I talked to Andrew Luck and, uh, you know, we're still free. He's a good friend of mine. We're friends. Yeah. But, um, you know, I can't comment about whether he's going to come back or not. He's and not. it's like, he's not going to come back, but like he's the shadiest fucking owner yeah. in the history because he does this every year. Like, right before the season, like, when Andrew Luck was hurt, he's like, and, and Peyton Manning, too, and Manning was hurt, he's like, yeah, he's going to play. Sells his fucking season tickets and then goes, oh, yeah, he's not playing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, he's now he's just throwing out this fucking, this line and being yeah. like, Andrew Luck might come back, but I can't comment on it. It's like, no, he's not. It's a fucking <sighs> shame, the world we live in, where, uh... Go eat some pills and pass yeah, out. Yeah, that's what I mean. Se. Like, you just, you can't even trust a fucking rich drug addict who wears Ed Hardy clothing. Yeah, like, it's weird, right? Fucking, the bottom <laughs> is really falling out on this society. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the bottom falling out, uh, did you see the Flat Earther this week? Oh, yeah. Unbelievable. Love this guy. Well, loved this guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. R.I.P., dude. <laughs> uh, by the way, before we make fun of him, this was not the first rocket attempt, so I feel totally justified. Oh, no, he's crashed a few sick. of them, from what, I, from what I understand. So, yeah, it, uh, this guy, is a, I can't remember his name, <laughs> Daredevil. He's been building rockets. Mad Mike Hughes. Mad Mike Hughes. He's been building rockets. Yeah. And launching himself, you know, like trying to get to space to prove that the earth is flat. Yeah. And uh, due to the earth being round and that pesky gravitational pull, uh, got him. Right. So here I actually (laughs) have like I think he had his plan like a manifesto laid out. Right. The plan. 
float dozens of miles high in a balloon, then fly a rocket to the Kármán line. Yeah. The 62 mile 62 high miles, that yep. separates the atmosphere. And that's the when you're officially. Space. That's when you're officially in space. It's right. like 62 miles. And then he said he's going to film the whole way for three hours. The world stops, he mm-hmm. said during a live stream. So this guy. This is OK. So I would just be like, all right, that's your plan. That's cool. Like if I was an investor. Right. right. Like if this was Shark Tank and he was pitching us this plan, I'd be like, cool. Right. Like the going up 62 miles. Cool. But like, what is your reentry plan? Well, that's the thing. What I is the fucking reentry but here, plan? But here's the other, like he was going to get up there. He was going to film the whole way. Yeah. But he's like that guy that gets up there, films it, sees the curvature of the earth, and then gets back down, and he's like, ah, oh, that's my bad. I accidentally put the fisheye lens on there. That's what the curve was. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he would not accept it as the truth, and he would have an excuse. Well, it's fucking... And then, yeah, I mean, of course, his, like, self-made rocket malfunctioned immediately, right? Weird. I think it was the parachute, like, Shocking. caught. And, you know, like, yeah. I was just like, come... but this is... You can't be a DIY astronaut yeah <laughs> you know, like, i mean they made that movie with the guy yeah. in the barn that's a movie yeah, they're, like i saw radio flyer when i was yeah. a kid you know it's you can't but this is it's almost sad to me in the sense of and i am, have as conspiratorial a mind as anyone yeah, right? me too. I, love I love conspiracies them. but as a thought exercise right i'm not launching myself into the sewers in like a high speed go-kart so i can find the fucking <laughs> lizard men you know yeah. what i mean like i'm not going that far. yeah and so <laughs> the thing that's baffling, right? Is what it's like. How is this still? How is flat Earth still a thing? This is what I always ask myself. I was like, guys, yeah. if the world has a fucking edge, yeah, get a fucking canoe and go and fucking row out, yeah. right? And live stream yourself falling into the yeah. abyss, right? They never answer like, what is on the edge? Well, they say it's surrounded by like the mountain range. Okay, well, fucking, then you're not even gonna fall off. Yeah. Go climb out, those mountains. Climb the fucking mountain and then be like, bro, I got it. Yeah. Like, film a TikTok. That I'm shit in. will be lit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, in. What is happening? And they say, like, the moon is like a, a hologram. Yeah. I love that one. <laughs> that one I could be fully in on. I'm, I'm cool in. with that. Yeah, I am in. Uh, the, the flat earth is, is fun. Kyrie is into no, it. But, like, Kyrie got yeah. caught. Well, Kyrie's Logan gotta... Paul was, like, really in on this for a while. He's yeah. like, I'm going to do it. B.O.B. B.O. I didn't know B.O.B. Yeah. was B.O.B. was one of the first. He actually is the guy. I think he took a picture out of the airplane window and he's like, I'm on an airplane, man. Like not even close. <laughs> not even. Look how know, flat look that how shit fuck, is. And it's like, do you fucking understand the <clears throat> difference between an airplane who's descending and 62 fucking miles <laughs> in the air? Yeah. Like it's it's fucking insane that these people are so dumb. Yeah. But this is this gets to the bigger point is why? Why do we live in the era now where something like Flat Earth is just well, contagious, right? Yeah. Like we've been talking about this with, uh, what's his name? The governor of Newsom, right? The governor of California. Oh, yeah. His wife now, and they think it's just pandering to, like, rich California ladies, is saying she is uh, going to help them, you know, space out vaccines. And, like, she's kind of, an, you know, helping these anti-vaxxers. Right. But she's being pretty politician right. about it. And I was just like, so it's not like a, a wealth or education. Like, we all have our fucking things yeah. that we just so wildly accept, <laughs> yeah. right? I mean, Mad Dog's a little, Mad Mike's a little different because he's like, I'll fucking launch myself up there and prove it. <laughs> Mad Dog Mike. Yeah, I mean, he calls himself Mad Mike, right? <laughs> Probably wasn't going to make it to old Fitting. age anyways. Well, but what do you think? Like, what is fucking happening that this is so fucking it's, rampant? It's, well, it's it's like any it's like anything. Like, people's lives are, are shit and... And they don't have anything else to cling to, so they yeah. just cling to to that because they you know, they can find some kind of fulfillment. I don't know, but like they're I but don't do you, I don't want to get too. I, yeah, let fuck. me ask you it's earnestly: fun. Do you think no, no, no? The way me and you do it is fun. Yeah, right. The way me and you do it is fun. Where it's like, well, oh man, did because we went through this fucking long conspiracy theory, yeah. and I I'm setting up. We're gonna do a whole show about it. Oh yeah, but the conspiracy theory being that the world ended in 2012. I right? love this. There's this long Twitter. I feed love it about the guy. He goes from that to uh were a simulation to they moved rikers island in the statue of liberty <laughs> and it just has like everything well, you're like this is like 20 conspiracies in one it's amazing and me and you text about it uh-huh and maybe do a podcast about it yeah but then we go about our fucking lives well yeah that's fun well here's the thing when so- you're launching yourself into space <laughs> to prove something that everyone knows is not true that's when it there, becomes there are, scary. There are people that that genuinely like believe in it. And I, and I know this because I watched that documentary about the flat Earth. I did too. And it's a great documentary, <laughs> but there's there's one part where they do the experiment 
where they're they're out over the water. Right. And they set up the two poles mm -hmm. and they mark them so that if there's a curve, the I think they used lasers. The laser should hit at a lower point on the one, mm -hmm. and it did because there is a curve in the earth. <laughs> and like the disappointment on these guys' face. But they still didn't relent. They were like, we got to check. There could be Yeah, something. the guy's like, we gotta, there could be something wrong with this yeah. thing. He's like, well, we'll have to come back tomorrow and try it again. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's like, they just didn't experiment and prove themselves wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, you see it all. Like, there was this kid on YouTube who got, like, you know, a viral-ish video because he was trying to prove Flat Earth. And I was like, they found a kid who looked like Harry Potter. Right. Right. So they're like, he has glasses. He must be smart. <laughs> right. And he's, uh, I forget what he says. He's like, here's a plate. And he pours water on the plate. And he's like, this makes sense. This is how you have oceans and lakes and whatever. <laughs> and then he holds up an orange and he pours water on it. And the water runs off. And he's like. <laughs> he just stares at the camera like fucking dummies what? <laughs> and i'm like the, the amount of stupidity mixed with arrogance yeah i was like i'm super down with that like that yeah. makes for great entertainment but i was just like it's but this is getting into a bigger thing where because <laughs> it came out with these deep fake videos and i oh, told yeah. you i was like i love the deep on fakes. our conspiracy podcast i said specifically i was like the end of the world is going to be caused by deep <laughs> right you did like it's absolutely happening <laughs> where the end of everything we know as a society it's not even going to be ai or robots it's going to be deep fakes right because my theory being if you put out a deep fake right now and it was trump like you know, oh, I'll butt fuck Putin, blah, blah, blah. You know, I'll fucking come on his face. That's not a deep fake. He actually said. Yeah, but that's what I mean. <laughs> we have a president where you could deep fake him saying anything, right? Well, yeah. And we'd be like. And people would believe it. And that's the thing. Information and misinformation travels so fucking fast. Yep. That, you know, nukes could be flying in the air before someone's like, actually, it's Snopes is like, yeah. sorry, guys, we had like a lunch break, but uh, don't blow up everything. Right? And I was just like. This is the thing. The fact that like, mad mics of the world out there are willing to take action and this fucking, yeah. you know, because that's what I mean. Like, I love everything that is not real. Yeah. Right. Like, I'm one of those guys where I have friends and neighbors and whatever, where they're just like, we like real things. We like going places. Well, I'm like, right. That's cool. You can go to a farmer's market. It's not as cool as me going to like Middle Earth. Middle Earth is more fun than the farmer's market in yeah. Carmel. It just is. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's a better place to be. So I love all this shit. Yeah. But the fact that we're taking actions now. I love it. It's fucking scary. It's fun. It's, it I don't know. Me. It's fun. It's fun. No, it's, again, it's fun the way we do it. <laughs> don't fucking strap yourself to the rockets. <laughs> <laughs> you can't deep fake. I want, I, I want to do some deep, I don't know, I want somebody to deep fake me and I'll say some crazy shit. Dude, I watched one this week, and the one that was going around was they put Tom Holland and Robert Downey Jr. in Back to the Future. Yeah, I've seen a bunch right? of those. And yeah, they yeah. do, like, Jim Carrey and the, the Shining. Yeah, the, that was the first one I saw was Jim Carrey and the Shining. Yeah. And, and that like, one's cool. It's pretty good now. It's not great. Like, you can tell. Yeah. But I was like, I mean, what are we, like, two years away from completely not ever being able? I loved I, it. Actually, there's a movie coming out well, where they're doing James Dean. I so saw they that. Made yeah, this yeah, yeah. Movie and James Dean is the lead actor, and if I'm not mistaken, they're going to deep fake him. Yeah. Into this movie. Well, that's all the Irishman was. It was like a whole movie of deep fakes. <laughs> I mean, that's. I mean, that's. Yeah. That's the technology that they that yeah. they use. I mean, essentially, right? Yeah. But that's the scary fucking thing, right? So James Dean is a dead guy, and they're just like, yeah, we'll fucking roll yeah. him out there for a new like. <laughs> Like, Does he get to negotiate his contract? Like, yeah. is it really a James Dean performance if James <laughs> Dean isn't fucking there making choices? Right. Do they get this, like, at 90 to 100 years old, he wouldn't make new choices? Like, what the <laughs> fuck? Like, we didn't get the fat Brando phase from it. There's so many questions. Yeah. But that's what, if it gets to that point. But then, at that point, you're just making animated movies. No, they, it, but this is the Disney model, right? It's like, do you want to see Lion King uh, as a different cartoon? Like, I watched that movie, and they're like, I love that they called, like, Lion King. King, and it's not live action. It's an animated movie. No, there's nothing live about <laughs> it's it. It's an animated movie. And actually, movie. you could argue that it's less animated, right? Like, because yeah. the cartoons at least have faces that show emotion. And this, like, when uh, Mufasa dies or whatever, Simba's just, <laughs> he looks like he's waiting on you to change his kitty No, letter. not my dad. Yeah. <laughs> oh, bummer. I don't you know, know what I, I mean? Like, I was kind of rooting for Scar in the original one anyway. <laughs> It's kind of a badass. I mean, Be prepared. If, if we're being fair, let's look at the resumes. Mufasa's like, hey, other minority, you go live in the wastelands with no food. And Scar's like, 
come on in. <laughs> right? Scar was Bernie Sanders before Bernie. He's like, come on in. The pride lands for all. I mean, granted, they probably need a little more regulation. Make sure you, you donate before you come in. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you donate. Does uh, the gazelle meat taste better when you get it from someone else's mouth? Yeah. <laughs> By the way, don't fucking at me. I like Bernie. Jesus. You want to be careful don't with the Bernie me. bros, yeah, man. They've been, gotta... they've been on the attack big time yeah. lately. <laughs> Hey, guys, we got to get out of here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.